the next section that we'll go into is EFTs, which is what they use in the Canadian side, or ACH in the US side, which is making electronic payments here. So the first error or first tip that we typically commonly see is we have to make sure that the last remittance advice number is set up. In this case here, we have this one that says EFT-002. So we got to make sure that we have enough zeros. So in case it increments to 9999, it increments to the next one. And once the remittance has been paid, it will increment to the next number here. I'm just going to go into my environment here. Go into my bank accounts. Go back into checking here. And as we mentioned before, it's really important to have these items filled out, which is your last check number, last remittance. If you don't have a remittance here, you will get an error message and you won't be able to process your ETF transactions or EFT transactions. So the next common error that we have is uh, we're missing the file export file name in here. So under the bank account, make sure that you do have the, under this transfer section, ePay export file name, we have the file here. In this case, similar before, we use EFT-0002, make sure there's enough zeros so it increments properly, depending on how many checks that you do there. So when you're voiding the remittance, so we have a video on how to process ET, uh, EFTs. So you have to you know, enter the transactions, suspend the payments, enter the transactions, then afterwards you have to export the remittance. Sometimes you will you will need to void the remittance to redo your transactions before and after posting. If it hasn't been posted, in the payment journal here, we can have void remittance here. But if it's been posted, we would have to go into the check ledger entries, similar to before, and then afterwards void it from there. So it depends if it's, uh, if it's been voided or not from that transaction there. Another tip that is very important is under the vendor cards here. Let's jump back in here. One of the errors that we have is the file export uh, has one or more errors, right? And what happens is a few things that we need to check in our setup. So in the vendor here, We're going to bring up Vendor, we're going to bring up Fabricam, uh, under Vendor and Bank Accounts here. So here's a different type of bank accounts here that we have set up for paying the vendors electronically here. So we, a couple of important things that we have to make sure that we have here is especially the country and region code. If that's missing, we'll get the error message. If we're missing the branch number, uh, account number, we'll get an error message and it won't. Uh, it won't go from there. So one of the typical common errors that we really see is the country or the region code. And that's always, uh, if it's missing or if it's not there, if it's incorrect, then your EFT, ETF file won't transfer properly or won't generate properly. One other tip here uh, that we have here is default your vendor bank accounts here. So we'll just jump right into our environment here. And under the vendor here, under payments, under payments, oh, I forgot to press show more here. Then you can pick here and you can pick the preferred bank account. So what happens is when we make the payments for this person, it'll always use this bank account with all the information that it has in there from the electronic formats. Um, the reason is because sometimes some vendors have multiple or different types of uh, vendor bank accounts and different information. So if you default this using the vendor bank, a preferred vendor bank account, then it'll always default this in your transactions. So here's some of the stuff that we mentioned, missing the country code or missing the region. That's when we get our typical errors. And uh, payment methods we talked about already. And uh, those were all the tips that I have 